All right, Markel, thank you very much for that update. We are kindly joined by Congressman John Fleming here in studio discussing Justice Antonin Scalia's replacement. Congressman, thank you for being with us first Thanks, and foremost. Sure. I want to give everybody the lay of the land where we stand right now with that appointment. Uh, currently, White House Counsel W. Neal Eggleston is managing this entire process. His office said earlier in the week that by tomorrow they should have narrowed their choices down to three or four candidates with extensive background checks. So um, there's been plenty of talk all week long, sure. Congressman, about this, about the Senate possibly blocking any appointment that President Barack Obama makes. Where do you stand on this issue? Yeah, I, I stand right there, Dan. I feel like that this president's term is almost up. Um, Anthony Scalia, Scalia was an icon. Uh, he was an originalist. He was a strict constructionist. He was a huge conservative. He had a, we, the court has lost a wonderful man and a wonderful jurist mind. And it's important that we replace him with someone like him, similar to him. So the court's out of balance. We've lost a huge conservative. I believe that, that the Senate should not confirm. The president can put forth anybody he wants, but the, the Senate it's should not. It's, it's his job. It's his job. It is. Yes. But it's also the Senate's job sure. not to confirm someone mm -hmm. uh, until we have the right person. And I think that should be left to the next president. I look forward to being in the Senate next year and being one of the ones firm, not only just a Republican choice or conservative, but a real originalist, a strict constructionist like Scalia was. Let's talk about uh, Justice, former uh, retired Supreme Court Justice Sandra uh, uh, Day O'Connor. Yes. She's a conservative. Granted, she just skews uh, more towards the moderate side. Yeah. She came out saying, uh, you know, the court needs a new justice. The president should appoint and the Senate should do its job as well. And if a qualified candidate is there, they need to appoint that qualified candidate. Yeah. What, are, what are your thoughts on that? Uh, many times in history, the court has had only eight members. Right. Uh, they can they can pass uh, uh, their decisions with only eight. Mm -hmm. uh, they can defer things to the next court if they decide to do that. They can refuse to hear and send it back to a lower court. So no, the, the court can continue working just as it has every day with eight justices. There's just no reason to move on and, and put in that ninth one until we have the opportunity to replace Scalia with a real Scalia replacement. With all that said, are then we looking at the long longest vacancy that this court possibly has ever seen. We understand what happened back in 1960s, late 60s with Richard Nixon and several of his appointments being shot down. Are we coming upon that same type of scenario? Um, I haven't looked into the history of this, Dan, no. but I can tell you that it's actually fairly rare mm -hmm. for a president to choose a justice replacement during his last year of his final term. Sure. So it would be, uh, I think, a new precedent for him to do that. Mm -hmm. And that's why, again, most presidents delay that for the next president, Democrat or Republican. In this case, um, we think it's going to be a Republican, and we think it's well that we should wait. Remember that Democrat presidents always get the far left. Uh, judges, they're always uh, l somewhat liberal, if not far liberal. Right. Republicans get middle of the road people. Mm -hmm. And so it's rare that you get the opportunity to replace a Scalia with someone who's equally as conservative and is an originalist in the court. Congressman, thank you so much for being always with us here. For being for yes, yes, thank sir. you for your thank time. You. Stick around, we'll be right back with a final check of your forecast after the break.